Hello, and welcome to Women's Health. Women's Health is a series of programs that are produced by the Women's Foundation of Lincoln and Lancaster County in conjunction with the Mayor's Commission on Women. My name is Kathy Ermacher, and I am the president of the Women's Foundation. I also serve as the chair of the Mayor's Commission on Women. Today, our topic is Read Aloud Lincoln, which is an initiative that perhaps you've heard of in town, but if not, we're gonna give you a lot of good information today about reading aloud to children. My guests today, and I wanna say thank you for being here, are Mary Ryman and Nancy Larimer, and they are here because they are the leaders of the Read Aloud Lincoln initiative. And so we're gonna start out by just talking about it, and then hopefully we'll have a chance to look at some of these great materials that they've brought with us today. Okay, so let's start out first of all by talking about what is Read Aloud Lincoln? What does that mean? Read Aloud Lincoln, as you said, is a two-year initiative to encourage everyone, parents, caregivers, grandparents, ev everyone, to read aloud to children every day for 15 minutes from birth to age five. And we are the co-directors of this initiative um, to reach out across Lincoln to spread the message that reading aloud to children is vital for their success in life and certainly their success in school. Okay, and how did this start? I mean, how did, how did this come about? How did you get involved? We came, became involved through um, the Lincoln Community Foundation who really initiated the Prosper Lincoln Initiative where they questioned all kinds of citizens throughout Lincoln about what needed to be done, what do we really need to focus on to ensure the success of Lincoln in the future. And one of those key areas, one of the three key, key areas was early childhood education. Okay, so this is part of the Early Childhood Initiative, or the part of Prosper Lincoln. Exactly. exactly. Okay, and then how did you get involved, Mary? Well, um, you know, <laughs> well, we had been, Nancy and I had both been librarians in Lincoln Public Schools for many, many years. She had retired a few years before I did. I retired at about the same time that this was, um, the grant was being um, implemented. And so we were asked if we would consider doing this and it was a perfect fit. You know, for Nancy and I had been librarians and worked with literacy and reading and the importance of reading from pre-K 12 for many, many years. And now we've just moved that focus down to birth to five. And the things that we have learned along the way have been fascinating. Mm -hmm. Everything from early childhood development of brain development of babies. There's been so much research that's been done in the last few, in the, the last five years. And and our goal for this grant then is to make sure that every parent, like Nancy said, reads to their child every day, at least 15 minutes every day. Doesn't have to be only 15 minutes, but that 15 minutes is vital. Doesn't have to be all together. It can be five minutes here, five minutes there. And it's also talking and singing and everything else associated with that. And that's one key piece. But the other key piece, the other goal is making sure we have books in every home. Mm. Because for so many of us who from our world, especially a library world where we believe that everyone would want to go to the library and gets to the library and can get books that way or they can buy books for their home and now Amazon can deliver them to your home, but not every family has that opportunity. And so it's really a two-fold initiative and um, it, the, we are starting it now with these, the first two years and then we are going to find, our goal is to find all the ways it can be sustained across the city. What about this initial grant? Because you mentioned that and our viewers may be mm -hmm. asking, what, what grant are we talking about? Right. The grant was uh, initiated through the Lincoln Community Foundation, but it also partnered with the Institute of Museum and Library Services, which is a national organization, and um, they really stepped outside of the box when you think of museums. Um, they wanted to explore early childhood education as well because they know that that's vital to the success of both museums and libraries. So we have four partners, well actually we have five partners, four museum partners, and that would be the University of Nebraska History Museum, which we all kind of know as Morrill Hall, and History Nebraska, which we kind of think of as the old State Historical Society okay. here in Lincoln, and then uh, MAMA, which is the Midwestern African Museum of Art, as well as the Lincoln Children's Museum. And then, of course, the big partner is Lincoln City Libraries, who's always been trying to reach everybody in Lincoln about the importance of reading. 
But with those museums, we see that w the collaboration is the big piece. They didn't often work together necessarily. They all had their own programs and they did things, but maybe early childhood wasn't really one of their focuses. So this grant has given them the opportunity to collaborate, to increase what they have within their museums that would be of interest to families with small children. Uh, Reading Nooks has been one of the, the really nice additions that they've done. But they are also um, working together in different activities, events that, that we've planned with um, Read Aloud Lincoln. So that component, the, the museum and library component, is one, kind of one piece of the grant along with the education of par for parents on the importance of reading aloud and the distribution of reading materials, books. That's, that's really a unique situation. That, mm -hmm. that collaboration mm -hmm. of the museums, mm -hmm. the libraries, the community, mm -hmm. the community foundation, mm -hmm. It's, it's a very, very comprehensive group mm -hmm. of people. They're which looking is to Lincoln to be um, kind of a model oh. for um, the country um, with museums and library collaboration mm -hmm. and um, the whole concept of the importance of reading aloud. They are a, they're a wonderful working group to oh, work with. Absolutely. They just have so many hour ideas that they <laughs> bounce off each other. And they just did not have the opportunity to do that before. Mm -hmm. It's not that they wouldn't have, mm -hmm. but I think all of them now do more story times than they've ever done before. They've always partnered some with the Lincoln City mm -hmm. Libraries, and now it's probably, it, everything's just embellished and bigger and better than it ever was mm -hmm. before. And it is just so fun to see that. that they're a great, great group. Now, this is women's health. So mm -hmm. some of our viewers may be saying, you know, what's the connection you know what mm -hmm. we all we've talked about reading aloud in 15 minutes a day and and that kind of thing and and I think the literacy thing is an important part but but why <coughs> health why how does this initiative tie into the health mm -hmm. of our community well if you think about it um, the the easy answer I think is feed the body feed the body feed the mind or feed the brain. So it's really, we have to, nutrition and health um, is comprehensive. And so when we look at, when we talk about for early childhood or any children or anyone, and having the nutrition of, the food nutrition and exercise and all of those pieces of the puzzle, for early childhood, probably the biggest piece of the puzzle is developing the brain. And that brain research that's been done in the last not too many years, mm -hmm. that shows that by age three or four, especially by age four, at least 80% of the brain is developed. So if we have not gotten lots of words, 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 and singing and play and creativity, and have children have had those opportunities, they are not going to be as successful and ready for kindergarten. It is, it is a fact, and so the easiest way to get words into the, other than your typical sit here, eat now, it's time to go to bed, you know, all of the things that we typically say. What books can do is give us a vocabulary that's much wider and richer. So when you look at any of the board books that are out there, when we start reading to children from the time they're born or before, and they hear their parents' voices, it does make a difference. A picture book, has about 500 words in it, a typical picture book. So every time you read a book, think of the number of words that they are hearing from your voice, and it does make a difference on brain development. And that's so for incredible. us, mm -hmm. we think that that's as important for their health as exercise and, and mobility and movement and nutrition. It's probably so it true. <clears throat> it's probably true that we don't have as many conversations as mm -hmm. we used to with young children That's right. because of the separations mm -hmm. of the time and distance mm -hmm. of you know families and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, sustained language in a book makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And so brain development is what we're talking about mm -hmm. here in the health mm -hmm. piece. Right. Um, words sentence structure, those kinds of things that are really developing the mind are the things that are really um, the health piece of mm -hmm. it. Right. Just yeah. recently there was a study done by uh, Dr. Mendelssohn in New York and um, in that research, in that study that they did, they also found that those children that were read to from a very early age had a lot less aggression 
and also had a lot less hyperactivity. They were able to concentrate better when they did get to school, and they really were able to show the correlation between that reading piece, the idea of the, the bonding, the, the feelings that happen when a child is on its parent or grandparent's lap is so special. It, it um, releases some of the, thi the things in the brain that are equated to pleasure. And people naturally want to do those things that are pleasurable. And if you can associate reading a fun book every night, Good Night Moon, parents and grandparents have to read that over and over till they think they're going to <laughs> yes. go blind. Good Night Moon is very uh, popular. Yes, yes, Good Night yes. Moon is very popular, but it's a, it's a wonderful thing. But whoever thought that it would um, impact aggression and impact um, hyperactivity, those kinds of health issues, which of course can really just be exacerbated by the inability to read when you do get to school, you know you're behind, you right, act out. Right. I mean, it's mm -hmm. all kinds of issues. So it's long term, mm -hmm. and it has yes. to do with school success as well mm -hmm. as success in life yes. as they go mm -hmm. along and mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Well, that's mm -hmm. incredible. That, that I think is a super important part for our viewers to know, and that is that all of these activities contribute to not only um, success later in school, but really as an infant, increasing brain's brain oh, development, absolutely. which is such an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk just for a second about a part of your initiative called Begin With Books, mm -hmm. because that is something that's uh, real close to our hearts mm -hmm. as Women's Foundation. So let's talk about Begin With Books. Mm -hmm. Begin With Books isn't um, an in an initiative that we started as Read Aloud Lincoln. This is something that the Lincoln City Libraries began about five years ago um, in collaboration with the health clinics, the health clinics for the underserved in Lincoln. And it started out with the health department and um, it correlates with a natural, a national program um, that has um, um, produced materials for doctors and nurses and healthcare providers um, to present at immunization checkups. And it includes educating parents seven different times in the immunization schedule from birth to age five. Mm -hmm. It involves giving them information so that they will know just how critical it is and what to expect of their child at a spe specific developmental uh, time in their life and then they present them with a book that they get to take home and it becomes part of their library so over a time that child will have seven different books and it might be in the language their original language um, um, often in English uh, but it really serves um, the purpose of getting books in the hands of parents and children and educating them at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, it's been a very, very successful program in Lincoln. And in fact, um, they have to have funding for that. It's a fairly expensive uh, program, about $20,000 a year to actually fund it with. Now, not just the health department, but with Health 360, the clinic, and with um, the um, Blue Stem, which is also a um, clinic for the underserved, and um, the Indian Center as well has um, mm -hmm. a program. So um, it's, it's something that we felt as Read Aloud Lincoln that we could help them find some funding and um, the uh, Nebraska Iowa Kiwanis um, organization, foundation actually, um, we wrote a grant to them and they helped um, fund that program for another year as well. So, so there are opportunities for organizations to absolutely. help in lots of different mm -hmm. ways. And I was just mentioning that the Women's Foundation is um, one of the groups that came up with the, not came up with the idea, but decided to jump into mm -hmm. this program. And so the Women's Foundation every month, and I want to mention to our viewers, every month the Women's Foundation goes to Head Start 360, mm -hmm. and we buy a book for each of the children every month, and then we read it to the children at the preschool at Head Start 360. So there are lots and lots of groups mm -hmm. of, that can do this same kind of thing around mm -hmm. town mm -hmm. and to contribute to helping everyone get books. Let's talk about other activities and other businesses or organizations organizations that have joined in mm -hmm. and what are some of the different kinds mm -hmm. of activities and we heard about the museums and the libraries <coughs> but are mm -hmm. there other businesses mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. organizations that have helped oh there are there are many well we can start really with individuals 
we love it and appreciate it greatly when individuals um, donate funds to us. We, we appreciated every amount of money that came to us for Give to Lincoln Day. We're a part of that. You were. And mm -hmm. then what we do with that is we buy books for a variety of causes. We use and we do lots of presentations with um, family literacy parents. Um, there's a wide variety. We have organizations that help give us funding, there, whether it's the Kiwanis has been ger generous, so has the Rotary, Rotary. and so has the, have the Optimists, mm -hmm. and we're also having a, a book drive with the um, East High Student Council is doing a book drive for us, Fire Spring has done a mm -hmm. book drive for us, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, we talk to lots of people along the way. We do, we do as many presentations as Nancy and I mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. to lots of different groups because and all of those people t tend to belong to some other organization and then that puts us in contact with someone else and that's what we need because our goal is to sustain this. This is not a, oh, we're going to do this for a couple of years and then oh, this will be all done and everyone will know about it and then we'll move on to something else. We believe that Read Aloud Lincoln has to become part of the culture of this city. And if in fact every child can have the opportunity to hear words, 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 being read to them or talked to them or sang to them every day for 15 minutes a day to get them ready for kindergarten. If those kids, every child in Lincoln started kindergarten at that level, think of what that would do by the time they graduate from high school and become a citizen of this city. Right. It would change the culture of this city in all good ways. What I love most about this is that no one thinks it's a bad idea. <laughs> That's you know, no one says it's to an you, mm, idea. <laughs> yes. And so, but we have to work together to make it happen. Every parent, every grandparent, every caregiver, but it's beyond that. The businesses in Lincoln, when they look at their workers and whether or not their workers even have time to get to the library, if they don't, why not have a book nook in their business somewhere so that they can take a they can take Goodnight Moon home, read it to their child, bring it back the next day, grab another one. There have to be new ways of us thinking outside the box, so to speak, to make it successful and make this be sustained across our city. And that's what the wonderful organizations and book clubs, we've had book clubs who have donated funds for us for to be able to put those kinds of book nooks in lots of our nonprofit places, Friendship Home, St. Monica's, Voices of Hope, Child Advocacy Center, places where children congregate with their parents so that, so that the people who work there can give the materials out on why it's so important, and then the children can have books to read along the way. Yes. The Lincoln Housing Authority is another fabulous resource that gives books out. It's amazing, truly. So much good work is happening in Lincoln, and we just have to make sure that everyone knows about it, and everyone knows how they can help, and everyone has the opportunity to um, read to their children when they want to. Right, right. I do like the idea of putting the book nooks in businesses. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about it, large businesses, let's say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of one, Kawasaki, I mm -hmm. think you and I mentioned mm -hmm. that that one point. If you have them in businesses or, or factories or industries like that, where they have maybe irregular hours right. and then can go in and check one out, take it home, talk, you know, you read it to their children, bring it back. It makes a lot of sense to have those kind of lending libraries mm -hmm. when they may not be able to assess the, access right. the public libraries. You're also not making them read um, The Very Hungry Caterpillar every night for, you know, <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> you have a variety of books and that's a good thing too. Although children <laughs> usually choose that even if they've read it a million times, that's right? right? That's right. Do you have favorites? Do you have favorites? Do people tell you stories about favorites oh, that they yeah. have? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's important too that you're mentioning that these need to be age appropriate Mm -hmm. and they need to be um, mm -hmm. sort of appropriate to whatever mm -hmm. stage in life the child is because right. obviously something that you would read to a baby might be very different than a right. four-year-old right. although right. I suppose it doesn't really matter a lot but there are different interest level mm -hmm. for children mm -hmm. so and that was one thing that I noticed about the program when we started working with Head Start 360 was the the interesting thing about like for example Scholastic mm -hmm. which is a very uh, obviously a lot of people know about that mm -hmm. reading club they really do say okay this is for mm -hmm. preschool mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is for kindergarten so right. that you do know what you can choose from and right. try to choose things right. that are appropriate. We try to um, give people information about that on our website readaloudlincoln.org okay. read because we have a section on books that are appropriate 
four different age levels. So if you have a toddler, there's a section to just click on that and it will give you some appropriate books. It will give you lists of appropriate mm -hmm. titles that you can check out. Um, online or through the library or you know mm -hmm. just knowing what to look for for mm -hmm. your three-year-old mm -hmm. um, so you can graduate with their reading ability and interests um, all through from birth to age five so we try to make that easy we try to have things that will be useful to parents grandparents whomever um, on our website. We also have mm -hmm. a calendar of events on our website which mm -hmm. I think is important to mention. Okay. And that is really story times and activ free. Free activities and free story times around the city of Lincoln. We tried, mm -hmm. Nancy's so good at making our calendar every month and so please look at readaloudlincoln.org mm -hmm. on the website under events mm -hmm. and that will give the calendar of things happening every month so that families don't have to, you know, it's it, they have opportunities to go and hear stories mm -hmm. of others mm -hmm. reading stories to their children too. Right, yeah. right, and know where they can access Absolutely. books for free right. or whatever. Exactly. Well, what about um, your Facebook? I noticed that you have a good mm -hmm. Facebook. What is that we, called? Um, just ironically, cleverly, read aloud Lincoln. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> should be easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much that covers it all. Um, mm -hmm. You can email us at read aloud Lincoln, Nancy at read aloud Lincoln, or Mary at read aloud <laughs> Lincoln. We tried to keep it easy, um, but our Facebook and we have an Instagram account as well. And so that social media piece is really um, beneficial to us. Sure. We get a lot of comments and. Mm -hmm. um, really um, good donations and that kind of thing from our uh, online presence. But it's also a way to let people know what's happening, what are the museums doing to mm -hmm. promote reading mm -hmm. aloud. It's a great idea. And what, why is it important? We use information from a national organization called readaloud.org um, and they they have been around for almost 10 years now and have really set the bar high for everybody and have provided wonderful materials. Mm -hmm. Some of the materials we use, for example, uh, bookmarks, one of our really really popular bookmarks right now is our giraffe bookmark okay. because we, we can tie it into the three giraffes at the children's zoo. <laughs> That's right. And kids love, love, right. love this. But this is from that um, organization. And we've created some of our own as well. But those things are on our website okay. and can be downloaded. And there's a link to read aloud. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I do want to tell our viewers that we will have on the screen all of your information and okay. so they can always access that. And also, obviously, watch the program through um, the Women's Foundation page which is lincolnwomen.org. Um, but thank you, Mary and Nancy, for being here. We really appreciate your being here and, and talking to us about Read Aloud Lincoln. And we really do hope that our viewers will get involved by reading aloud to their children. And the goal is 15 minutes a day, birth to age five and then beyond, but for sure birth age to uh, zero to five. So this has been Women's Foundation's Women's Health Program. Please join us again.